Scotland won, Switzerland won. I am covered like an Eskimo because it is cold in Nairobi. It is cold. But you know where it wasn't cold? In that stadium. Their fans were insane. Insane. <laughs> Shout out to all those fans at the stadium. It's like they played for them. It's like they played for the Scotland team. The, do you guys know the FIFA 06 intro? That was one of my favorite Fifas, just because of the intro. This is the guy with the Scottish accent. It's like, feel the... What, what does he say? What does he say? Feel the fever of the raw. Hear the... Hear the... Uh, feel the fever of the crowd. Feel the raw of the faithful. Like, that's how it felt. Feel the fever of the crowd. Like, these guys were... And it was both it was both sets of fans. Like they were just going at it. The Tatan army versus the Swiss army. It was yo, the fans made this game even more beautiful. And I need to give a big apology because I have been talking so much smack about him. Steve Clark, the coach of Scotland. Because I I, I didn't see this. I, I I didn't know where he'd go next, right? He made one change which I had asked for. I had asked for Billy Gilmore to start. I guess everyone did. I also asked for Shankland to start, but there's a reason why he didn't start. And I'm starting to see it now. Like, you don't want to... This This is one of those games, like, the, the, the passion of the crowd was too high. You don't give someone who hasn't played through that um, emotion with the national team. I know he was a top scorer in the league, but you have to rely on your experienced players. And I guess that's where he went back to, um, Che Adams. Again, it wouldn't be fair on Che Adams as well. It's so that he played badly, so that he's injured. It's just that everyone wants Shankland to score goals. But that's just not Scotland's game. Scotland's game is just be with be close, be a threat on set pieces, hit you on the counter, and just be solid defensively. One of the things that uh, Steve Clark did today that was really impressive to me was um, he let McGinn and Mark Sauce go higher up. In midfield, it was uh, McGregor. McGregor and Billy Gilmore stayed at the middle. You already have a back three, and you have uh, Rolston and Robertson supporting. Tiani Henley and Henry at the back. McTominay and McGinn were pushing up. They were supporting Adams. That is something that has worked for them every single game in qualifying. They were about to finish top of their group, but Spain beat them, I think, in, in Spain, and then ended up just pipping them to top spot. But they were top for a while. And it was Maxos, who was doing all of the, all of the damage. In this game, he was there. Um, it was a corner from it was a Switzerland corner, then the ball, it was just like they're just header, header, header. The ball falls to Billy Gilmore. Does so well to like uh come it down. And then I was gonna say to Lisa. To Lisa is basically coming down in, in Swahili. And that's what I'm used to. And then he just like places it to the side and I can't remember who it was. He just runs. Finally passes the ball to Robo. Robo miss kicks, like complete miss kick, but then he manages to Laid off perfectly for Scotty to Hoti, who comes in with a left foot, left foot, um, and off the defender and into the net. They finally said that it was an own goal, uh, but I feel like you need you need to give you need to give Scotty to Hoti that that goal. You can't you can't take it away from him. Um, oh, it looks like now they gave it to him. It looks like he's been given the goal. Yeah, but they were saying that it was an own goal, like too far too many own goals, and Scotland were about to have the second own goal of the tournament. Um, like scored in their favor, but yeah, it's good that it, it wasn't. Um, yeah, like McGinn and Max were way, way high up, and I think they did so well is that the midfield was active. Xhaka, who was having a field day against Hungary, was not the same. This was a different type of game for him. He was just, it was just about being solid, uh, making sure the ball you enhance the play like from the back, but he was not getting space like he was uh, in the game against Hungary. Then, uh they were playing so well, but the thing that outdid them is that 30 minutes later, a mistake from Rolston. To be fair to Rolston, he didn't set a foot wrong after that. Even, I've just heard uh, Andy Robertson talk about it. And it's one of those things, I also felt like I was really coming to to like scold him, <laughs> you know. But what McTominay said was actually true. He didn't put a foot wrong after that. He was quite solid. The only other time I remember is... Um, what's this guy's name? Ndoye had the ball on the wing and then really sent him home and the shot went over the bar. But other than that, and obviously the goal, he didn't put a foot wrong. But let's talk about the goal for a second. Shakiri was also surprised starting in this game. I was quite shocked why Sha how Shakiri starting. And I thought he'd set him on the wing and Ndoye up front. Also, that's what they had put on the graphic. But it ended up being Shakiri being the striker and Ndoye out wide. In this particular case, it worked 
beautifully. Because the moment Rolson passed that ball to him, top bin, sir, one touch. And this just shows you at the highest level how costly mistakes can be, right? You almost have to be perfect for 90 minutes. And that's why I guess, I get what Robertson is saying is true. People do make mistakes. And when your player makes a mistake, you have to pick him up and tell him, you listen, one mistake, but you're a professional. Let's, let's tighten the ship and just play well. So, yeah, to be fair to him, he was really good after that. Um, yeah, Shakiri's goal, again, we've had so many goals from outside the box. Like, it's, it's, it's getting to a very, very wild, wild place at this point. And then he slid. The slid was such a useless slide. He actually just tripped himself and then woke up. And then he pretends like that was part of his celebration. But, yeah, Shaq, man, that was, that was insane. And then um, uh, 32 minutes, Ndoye has a one-on-one. Ndoye had a cr- crazy spin and move. And then um, he's one-on-one with Angus Gunn. To be fair to Gunn, he didn't have the greatest game against Hungary. This time around, he was really good. He would brilliant save to just not nudge it past the post. Because that if that goal goes in, then Scotland just... I don't know. I don't know where they would be. But yeah, they really did well to um, still hold on. But a minute later, Ndoye ended, ends up scoring from the corner. So the ball comes in and then it's headed... And everyone just stops like nothing has happened. Do it just before the keeper is about to catch the ball, he just passes with it, turns and shoots and scores. Again, automated offside has been working beautifully. Before the replay is even <coughs> sorry, before the replay is even done, we have a decision. And it was called offside almost just so quickly. VR gives no goal. Like it it's it's working beautifully. Or maybe it's just because we're so used to seeing VR in the Premier League take so long. Stuart Atwell draw those lines and take forever. Uh, maybe that's why. Um, yeah, then halftime, yeah. So obviously we go into halftime one one. Second half, the first like 15 minutes of the half was just like a cagey affair. It was just like no one wanted to lose. Um, then uh Ndoye had a chance as well there and just missed it wide. Um uh Shaka uh, sorry, Shakman, Shakiri. Came off uh, after 60 minutes. Quite a big performance from him. His hold-up play was actually quite impressive. Even the chance that Ndoye got that uh, Angus Gunn saved was from him just laying it off for him, you know. Like, he did quite quite a good job. At 60 minutes, this is more of an Arsenal fan thing. Kieran Tierney got injured and was stretched off. It didn't look, it didn't look nice. Like... He just really just made a hard impact onto the ground. The ankle just twisted. Looks like it was hyper hyperextended his knee as well. He had to be stretched off. Didn't look nice. So wishing all the best to KT. Um, then, yeah, seven minutes later, Scotland managed to get a free kick just outside the D. Robertson's delivery was really, really good today. The ball comes in and Henley at the far post just headers it off the bar. Like it was so close. And you're just like, no, so close. How does it off the bar? Um, and yeah, Scotland are now hanging on. Uh, Switzerland are playing like they don't want to lose. And this has been their, this has been my biggest worry about Scotland. They're just so solid and their games are so close, you know. And now when it gets to this point where it's like 70 minutes and it's a draw, it's hard to see, right? It's really hard to see what um, where they're going with it. Um, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then what happened after that? We had um, 82nd minute, we had a goal. Uh, Brilliant Bolo running onto a pa- uh, It was a miss pass from Scotland again. Very close to having a pass, uh, that misplaced pass leading to a goal. But after he scored, again, VR came in and gave offside. Um, 19th minute, Riddler, who had come on as well for Switzerland, had a free header in the D and then just headers it wide. Literally one of the worst misses I've seen in this tournament so far. I guess it came in a bit weirdly, but yeah, still one of the worst misses I've seen. And 91st minute, there's a ball that came across the D for Scotland, all the way to Robertson at the back post. He headers it across the, 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 across the, across the D and the ball was so close to getting to Max Hoss, had it not been for Akanji. Akanji's intervention, literally, that, that, that was a sure goal. And yeah, I think he saved a crucial, crucial point there. Um, yeah, one thing I realized in this game, Switzerland, physicality is really, really something that they've struggled with. Like, you need to be... Very, if you, Once you're physical with them, it, it's beca- it becomes a very tough ask for them. Um, to be fair to their coach, Zlatko Dalic, he made very crucial subs because I feel like those subs actually kept them in the game, right? At that moment in time. So Mbolo coming on for Shakiri, physicality, you match physicality with, you either get physical in terms of bringing on people with strength or pull with pace. And he did a bit of both, right? Mbolo is a big striker, um, very quick. And then uh, Rida is also a big guy. Siri is a big guy. 
Amduni is quite athletic. So yeah, he countered their physicality with athleticism at different points with, with his substitution. So um, shout out to Zlatko as well. And, um, that's just, those are just those small things in coaching that normally happen. And you're like, yo, yes, this this is it. But yeah, I think the biggest one is Scotland coach Steve Clark. You have you have done well today, and I owe you an apology because I've really gone hard at you. You're not too hard, but yeah, I was I was not very complimentary. Now I'm complimenting you. You have done it today. I, I'm proud of you. Hungary game. Now I want to see how you guys come out. Scotland have to play with passion. There's no other way. They cannot play any other way. That is how they're playing. That is what got them here. They don't. They're not. They have very good individual players. They don't have. But in the final third, they don't have like Fabian Ruiz, Musiala type of people. Like so, you have to play to your strengths, physicality and passion. That is it. And heart. And yeah, that is a wrap for day six. I think it is day six of Euro 2024. Tomorrow we have a big game: Spain versus Italy live here on TikTok. Make sure you join us. And with that, I just want to say. Good night and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.